You become family, we're all one big massive unit and like you've all got a piece of our hearts. It's just been it's been too quick. It's Leicester just seems like two seconds ago yeah. when we were all together to create the show. Mon is as well when we were when we two casts splitting the roles. Don't be strangers, we're all together now, you're all part of it. Yeah, it's it's been really special and I hope it's been special for everybody. No one can take this away from us. In 2018, the New Adventures company embarked on one of its biggest talent development projects since The Lord of the Flies. Our aim was to find local talent on and off stage in cities across the UK to be part of our brand new production of Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet. This will become one of our biggest talent development projects to date. So we're looking for another project around that kind of involvement of young people in the creation of it around the country. So we, we pondered on the idea for a while and the idea of Romeo and Juliet came up, which I was, uh, to be honest, actually quite resistant to, to begin with, because I, I, I thought it was a bit overdone. For me, my initial reaction was, well, can we make a version that's different enough for it to be worthy of doing? You know? We soon began to realise that actually if we were going to do it, we'd have to work with um, pockets of young people and then maybe have a cast which was of our younger company dancers. So it felt like that was the way to go. I think what was really challenging about this, this process of finding these young people was how do we find them, how do we attract them, how do we recruit them. So it felt like an audition process was, was definitely the, the right way to, to do it. After receiving over 1,000 applications from young people aged 16 to 19 years old, we set off on our national talent search. 420 were selected to take part in the auditions, which took place across 14 venues around the country. This was a great chance for us to see the next generation of dancers and provide a space for them to show us their creativity and passion. By the end of each day, six dancers were selected from every venue to form the local company. Our main aim was that they would just have a really good time from that day, even if they weren't successful in the audition, that they would come away feeling uplifted and feeling excited and invigorated and leaving with some constructive criticism that they could go away and work on. The whole kind of essence and theme of this project is young people. So uh, Ariel's only 21, so she's not that far off some of you. Uh, and she's the next big exciting choreographic talent, I think, in this country. <laughs> she gets really embarrassed when I say this. We're going to have a young designer, a young lighting designer, a young conductor, a young orchestrator. Yeah, so there's youth, and that's really exciting. We're gonna, it's going to be fresh and new and original. We started auditioning really early, and it was such a long way from when we were rehearsing, so we didn't know what the show was, because normally you have a very specific casting bracket, 
And we did, we gave ourselves like personality sort of types we were looking for, but other than that, it was fairly free. And I think we allowed ourselves to be inspired by the young people we were seeing. What was amazing about those auditions was the fact that they were all really ready to give everything a go. Young people are really brave. And I don't remember being like that. Maybe I was. So from there, I'm going five, six, seven. I'm pulling away from where I'm looking. Does that make sense? And we also had to make sure that there was a, a performance spirit about them. You know, whether or not they were going to ping. That was um, the phrase that we used. Are they pinging? It's, a, it's, a, it's a quite a a mysterious quality that, that's quite hard to define in words, but I think we've all seen it when we've, when we've watched a performance and someone just really, <gasps> they just got it. So yeah, we weren't asking for much, you know, we just wanted someone amazing that danced really well and that, that was confident. I think it's, a lot of it is to do with knowing yourself, which is a big ask when you're that young. Our aim was for them to not be able to be picked out and say, oh, that, that person's part of the young cast. And I do think we achieved that. But it was so demanding because some of them were babies, some of them were 15 going on 16. Paul and Arielle and myself would have Polaroids and putting different people together and then go, oh no, maybe we should put that person in. So we did a lot of that. Um, and eventually we found our casts. <laughs> Well, the audition process for me was um, mostly, I, I think I cast the, the leading roles from people I already knew, but they were people who may have not created a full role, um, so it was a very important thing for them, and I wanted that kind of young spirit in them. But many of our professional cast uh, were actually close to graduates, they were very, you know, just people just coming into the industry. Um, and that was really good for the piece as well because there was a very close age range between the professional cast and the young people who came to us around the country who joined the production. Sometimes they were almost the same age. Ben, make sure you get up faster. Yeah, so like up, just roll and stand, like roll to one leg to stand up rather than like rolling and then getting up and running. Cool? Um, make sure you're outside of Layla. You should be dead behind Layla. Um, actually, I mean, come forward a bit. There we go. And you two in a bit. I think I was about five. I'm not completely sure. But, um, like, I started in, like, ballet, like, pre-primary. Um, and then went up from there. But I wasn't, like, quite sure about it. And then I started doing, like, modern and tap. And it grew from there. And um, eventually auditioned to come here. When I got in here, I was like, I really do want to do this. I was in year seven and I was in Lord of the Flies. That was like, again, crazy because they came here to audition all of the boys, like most of the school. And I think there were only a couple of us that got asked to do the audition from the workshop. Um, and then like getting the phone call was like crazy. Like I ran around the house screaming and it was like so, so insane. Dancing makes me really happy and like, yeah, it hurts. It's a pain sometimes, but it's a completely different feeling like knowing that like I'm trained to become a dancer. And it's just so like, it's different and it makes me so happy. Yeah. So pretty much as soon as we'd cast these young people across the, the country, we had to go into getting them ready for the show. Each local cast had three intensives. The first intensive was about getting to know the company and the way we worked and having fun, really. It wasn't just about them being dancers, it was about building them up as artists, allowing them to be emotionally vulnerable as well. We had some tears, we had, we had everything. They had to, we had to get them to be quite open with us and trust us, and, which is really hard. It was intense and me and Ariel were travelling around the country and spending three days with one group and then we'd have to, we were flying, we were driving. Paul and I were just on a road trip. Opened what? what Google. Opened? Google, of, what's this car called, Ariel? The Enigma. <laughs> the Enigma? <laughs> It's the, the insignia, but it insignia. does feel like an enigma because we don't know how to open the fuel. We've been in Plymouth. It was 
quicker to drive than to get a train. But now I don't think it would have been. We start at 10 in the morning and it's 10 now and we're not there yet. So can we cut? Because your door's open. And I'm scared oh you're just going to like, get That's sucked down. And I've got this little sign saying door open. We're showing the blood, sweat and tears of being a professional dancer. <laughs> yeah. Does this happen a lot? With me, yeah. Happens to him all the time. Really? Yeah. So he, we were just saying, like, he's putting surgical spirit on, which really helps, like, toughen up the feet. But it's just taking a, a, a while time. with you. Yeah, there. yeah, it's a process. Yeah. Right. Do you, are you all right with that, or do you want some tape? Well, what I might do is whack a bit of tape over the top just to stop it. Do you have some tape? Yeah, Someone has some tape, all right. The drama. Oh, the drama. It goes, boom, yeah. But I really want to see this. Think about kissing your knee if you have to, yeah? Mwah. On the way out, because nobody's quite getting that moment. And it's not a flick, it's a smooth through the spine. A lot of you are kind of just giving me a, <laughs> yeah? Does that make sense? Each round of intensives consisted of three days of concentrated work, focusing not just on choreography, but developing the six young people, training them up to become part of the Romeo and Juliet company and to ensure that they would be ready by the time the show arrived in their city. So I think for me what's missing is just um, either the counts or the words, however you like to do it. You've got to be able to have one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, eight and one and two. You've got to just, it's got to be in your blood, in your body. Think All right. Great. Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thanks, Paul. Bye. Bye. Well done. Thank you. Did you ever dance like that before? No. It didn't feel like you'd ever dance no. like that before. Yeah. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> my, I don't know what's wrong with my head. It feels so heavy. Oh, it's, you've probably really yeah. pulled it's your. Like this bit. I literally yeah. like felt like. I was like no, so you need to like yeah, really massage yeah. and yeah. get some yeah. deep heat or tiger balm in there because it will be really. Yeah. And drink lots of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my problem, I never drink water. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. All right. See, See you soon. soon. Well done. Yeah. Bye. Where's my pen? Hey, hey. Come on. Oh no. <laughs> Come on then. Where's my pen? Go find my pen. I think these were the first these are my first ballet shoes, aren't they? So that yeah. And these are many point shoes from over the years. Carman, that's from actually, the, that is the actual programme from when I first saw it, from all the years ago. And that's been on my wall ever since. Like, that has been waking up to that, going to bed to that. Carman was the first Matthew Bond production I'd ever seen. And instantly, like, uh, since I saw it, it's been my dream. To, that's, oh, I really want it. Oh, I don't, I don't even know how to talk later, about don't it. You you? You just come away saying, oh my goodness me, that is, it's like That's it almost it. clicked. Like, yeah. I had all these things before that I loved, and like, I loved watching musicals, I loved doing this, I loved doing that. And then I saw it, and it just put everything into perspective almost. Like, mm. that is what I want, and that's what I want to be doing for the rest of my life, and it's so exciting. Dream come true, really. As cringy as it sounds, yeah, <laughs> it is my dream come true. <laughs> it's hard because when I first moved to London, it was so different. Like, I auditioned for all these schools. And like I auditioned for them, not really thinking about the fact I would be moving away from home. And then it kind of got to the day where I moved to London and it was like, oh my God, I'm going to be moving away from home. And that's when it kicked in. So like my first year, I was quite homesick, so I'd come back like all the time. As a dancer, I've never had all the free time in the world to go to all these parties, to go out and do stuff, because you are so dedicated to what you do. Like any free time, you just want to spend focusing on your dance because it is the most important thing in my life, I guess. Like the first year, I, d I, was, very, I was very awkward. I didn't speak much. I've never really had that confidence. I've tried to work on it a lot and I think that's what happened with my dance in my first year. I never really let go. And I think that's why I got so emotional at the first intensive because I think I really feel like that was the first time I'd really let go in my dance and that's why I just started crying after I did Ariel's piece because I'd never felt that way before. Like, that was a feeling I'd always wanted to feel. 
and, I, <laughs> and I'd never felt like that before. And we're such an amazing group of people. We're all so different, but we're all so same at the same time. And I think we all bring out the best in each other. We're really close and I feel so comfortable around them and it was almost like an instant click. Like we make each other laugh. We, when one of us cries, we're there for each other because we all understand how serious this is, how, how big it is, how big it impacts on us. I guess as a dancer, like one day I want to captivate someone, like that's what I want to do. That's why I dance. Like, one day I want to be on stage and be like captivating to somebody. Like I was captivated by these guys. We're warming up for the photos that are for the program. So they're getting all hyped up so they're not too cozy. Getting sweaty, getting a bit rough and ready so we can have some nice raw shots. It's a fine line between looking like you're gonna kill somebody and then just looking with like a sort of intention and a and a drive and a forward sort of forward focus. Originally I was actually a martial artist. Um, I started karate when I was around about four or five years old. That's nice. Morning bro. You're just here now? Just Okay, cool. I'll see you soon, man. Love you. I've got three lads that have been selected for the Matthew Bourne production and that's Jamie, Edwin and Matt and they've trained with me since they were around age nine, sort of ten, so I've seen them go through all their sort of youth and teenage years, um, which is quite funny. So Edwin had been with us for two, about two years, so he was actually the newest, he came the latest and um, he met the guys at school and they brought him into the Rage Company and it was a lovely union, you know, I adored Edwin, he's always looked 25, you know, from the age of 11, he's always looked 25. But then, you know, his parents came to me a couple of years later and said, look, we can't afford it. We don't want to afford it. He's not going to be a dancer. Like, there was a financial situation and they said that I had to stop and I didn't want to and I wanted to push on because this is something that I want to do with my life. It was difficult doing something that um, your closest circle around you don't want to do. But to think that I'd got him into the school for two years and you know he was going so well and to think we were going to lose him, he's like, no, I'm not losing him. As a member of Dexterity, our full dance school, he's like the dad of the entire school. He looks after every child in the school. He, he will sit and talk to the five-year-olds as much as he'll sit and talk to 15-year-olds and he is such a massive inspiration. It's like when you're performing, you go into a different headspace and if you're not in that headspace, you won't be able to do it properly or full out or perform to your maximum potential. It's a really difficult one to describe. It's kind of like it's digging deeper inside of yourself, but it's more than that. It's definitely, it's definitely difficult, but it's possible. These three boys have not even finished their training here. They've still got another year or two here with me. But to do this now, to get a real flavour of how a company works and learning how to behave amongst a professional company. And if they go into this world with a good quality company knowing all about them, that's only going to stand them in really good stead. You know, so it's a good launch pad, isn't it? But I think we're all prepared. And it's very exciting to see what the show is going to be like in May. Mm. I mean, you think we're prepared. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm not prepared. I don't think we're mentally prepared. We're physically prepared, but we're yeah. definitely not mentally prepared. I'm not prepared. even physically there, yeah. So I knew that Matthew Bourne's company is very prestigious. Um, his works are iconic. Um, and the idea of 
being a part of it is like a dream come true. I mean, he's one of my greatest idols. When I was little, I used to make up dances um, to my dad when he plays on the piano. And then my parents took me to a dance school in Leicester and that's when I immediately fell in love with it. It's like something as part of me. Because I'm very used to doing one-to-one -one lessons. It's nice also to be dancing with other dancers as well, because um, I'm not quite used to it. So we've really formed like a family and it's just, it's really lovely. It's like I get so excited <laughs> whenever the intensives are coming up because it's very inspiring to watch other dancers. I mean, everybody brings their own personality, different interpretations to the same piece and it's a really special moment. I remember when Ariel choreographed the solo, we all had to um, do it one by one and um, it was so emotionally impacting. I think it was the music that got me. I think there was something in that song that really hit me deep. It's just the, uh... I don't know. I don't even know what I was going to dance like. I didn't even know I was going to dance like about at first, but I don't know. It's just, I just came through, I guess. Mm -hmm. It was a really, really special moment. I'll always remember it because it was like the moment we all brought our personalities through and it was like the moment where we were like, we're really doing this. Um, like we are like one big family, I feel like. Um, and I feel like I've made like friends for life. Yeah, it's really special, yeah. So we are in the New Ventures office and for me this is a really rare, strange occasion of being in the office because I've been out on the road so much. Hello. Hello. Hi. At the moment I've got a tiny, tiny bit of downtime to catch up on some of my, my other work surrounding this project uh, whilst Matthew and Ariel are in the studio and they are doing some research and development with the principal characters before we go into rehearsals next week. So I have been uploading some of the films that we've taken of the young cast dancing the different phrases and their creative tasks. It's really important on this process that we send them the film so that they can use that film as a reference point to keep rehearsing and to keep going over things. Some of the young cast, we don't see them for four or five months now. So we need them to be, we talked a lot about them taking responsibility for their for their work and to come into rehearsals um, as prepped as they can be, like really holding on to the movement that they know, because there's gonna be so much stuff that they don't know and that's gonna be out of their control. Having completed their three sets of intensives and with the production premiering in Leicester, we invited down to London the six local company members who would be opening the show. They were now going to play an integral role in the creation of their parts helping to develop the characters that the other local companies would go on to play. This was 10 months on from their auditions and today they would be meeting the rest of the company for the first time. This is lovely, well that's it. Oh this is really cute. I'm nervous yes. now. Austin, sorry, I'll try it. Just say so Morning, Morning. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Good. And they like, they obviously know we're coming, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and no, we're just going to walk back. And Emily and Megan. They're oh, here. they were yeah, here. They, they come, yeah, they arrived earlier. Oh, OK. Um, going down. It's quite warm in the studio. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, joy. <laughs> you know what my feet are like. I live in here, so any issues. Is okay. okay. There's toilets along here, and then we can get changed as well. Hi, Beeps. Morning. Morning. Can we get changed really, really quick? Is that all yeah. right? Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. It was really fascinating for me to see those two worlds colliding. Myself and Ariel have been working in quite a vacuum, going around and working with these young people, and 
this was it. This was the, the proof of the pudding to, br to bring those young people into that space and to sort of test if, if what we'd done had, had worked. It was kind of an amazing introduction for that Leicester cast because the Romeo and Juliet cast knew that they had to bring them into the company and make them feel welcome and that it was okay to make mistakes and that they didn't have to know everything straight away. And that there's something amazing about watching a young person know that they're really scared and then seeing them sort of blossom and their confidence grow. Because it's a scary prospect, especially when you've got me at the front going, right, let's do it again. No, that was wrong, let's do it again. So that's quite scary. <laughs> People may not realise, but we had two complete casts for this show who toured around the country separately from each other. But the actual rehearsal process was great because you had the input of two casts and you have the input of two versions to play with and two lots of ideas from each cast uh, feeding into the one piece. You know, and that's very helpful and, and, um, and we felt like a big company. The logistical structure of the show was such a big deal because you've got the two companies You've got six young people every venue you go to. And we had to be so adaptable because no person is the same. Even within the two professional companies, the people playing the roles were very different. They weren't the same. They wouldn't necessarily have been cast in the same roles in other shows. And, but they both brought something to the table and sort of challenged one another creatively. Over six weeks, we created and rehearsed the show. The Montague Company and the Capulet Company working side by side to develop these new roles. Our Leicester local company joined us on the weekends to complete our ensemble of dancers, feeding in the choreography that they had learned during the intensives. They were in a unique position as they got to rehearse with both the Montagues and the Capulets, developing their technique and soaking up the shared knowledge of the rehearsal room. For many of them, this was their first taste of working in a professional dance environment. There were so many opportunities when I was training that I couldn't do because they cost a lot of money to get there and la la la. And what's amazing about this show is we had this opportunity that everyone could do. New Adventures are so passionate about working with young people because young people are the, you know, the future of what we do. I f fell into dance because a woman at uh, my careers evening asked me to go to a Saturday school class and that's where I ended up doing what I'm doing and I got it all for free because my mum and dad didn't have any money. So those are the people that you know you want to try and grab because they're the people who are going to give you loads of passion and because they want it so much. When I was growing up, I, I come from a really small village and I didn't have m much access. And it was, you know, dance for me was something I, I sort of accidentally fell into, but I always, I've always felt like a bit of an imposter because I, I didn't have, you know, those big opportunities when I was growing up to work, you know, have workshops or, you know, work with, you know, really amazing dance companies. It was, it was very sheltered. So I really want to be able to sort of give something back, I think, in my role and uh, have a chance to hopefully inspire and engage the, the next generation. We, we think it's very important that we bring that raw talent into the company. They bring a lot of energy with them and a lot of uh, excitement, but they will also learn from the more experienced members of the company who've been there a long time. The more experienced members of the company will also learn from the young people and also pick up on that energy and that excitement that they bring, the new talent. Uh, I, d I don't actually have a lot of things up in this room which are like, but that was the Lord of the Flies t-shirt. That was when we did it in Birmingham. And yeah, got the full cast on here. That was me in the middle. There is actually something here which was my first ever show that I performed in. Yeah, very different hair, long blonde hair, which is very different to what it is now. But I started dancing from a very young age of about four, but it's just the actual performance side of it, it was more down the drama side, which I still do now, but 
due to how much time it takes to dance, I just don't <laughs> get as much time to do it. Thankfully at school, I do dance and drama, so at the moment in what I'm doing through dance, it's probably not gonna help massively, especially when you go to these, you know, intensives where you're working solidly like 10 till 6 every day and then you go back to school you're there 8 till 3 and you think the amount of things you achieve I don't know it's just hard because you really want to be feeling like you're making the most out of your day and I feel when you're at school for me I feel like I lack that a bit because you know it's just not got the same discipline it's not got the same you know because it, it's a different setup but as hard as they are you, it, you come out going yeah I've properly used my time valuably and worked really hard in that time so it makes it special. One stage I think you were dancing every night of the week apart from Sunday. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, it was, you know, a lot of juggling really and uh, mm. and sort of, no we can't do that because we've got to be so and so to pick him up from somewhere, you know. <laughs> so yeah. I think the other incredible thing with Lord of the Flies was, you know, we'd seen a few Matthew Bourne productions by then and suddenly kind of thinking, oh yeah. My little boys on the stage with these professional dancers, you know, who've been dancing for years and are at the top of their game and stuff. Yeah, you feel proud, but it, yeah, it's quite emotional. Yeah. Yeah. It is about giving them an insight into the industry, which is so rare when you're in training to get a chance to be in a rehearsal studio, through going through that creative process, working with such a prolific um, director and choreographer. And then, you know, all the things that you learn about costume and, you know, being in the wings and warming up and getting ready for the show. And when I was a student, didn't, I didn't have a clue about any of those things. So for all of our cast, they, they got a taster of that. And I think that's, that's a really um, great legacy that we've left with these young people. With one last week of rehearsal and tech in Leicester, this was the final chance to tweak and perfect the show before the five month tour ahead. You have to, look, you have to sort of see something, you have to like, be going towards something. Make sure you want to go there, you know, then you get pulled back. Yeah, yeah. 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 Four, five, six, six, seven, eight, that's right. Search. Two, and three, four, and five. Six of break. Let's stop. I'm going to get my notes. I didn't watch any of that because I was so stressed out. Beautiful. Enough for now. We might add in more. Don't know what we'll need just yet. Yeah. It's like that weird fourth wall is there, which we, which is there, but you have to take your story out to the audience a bit more. Now that we're in this space, yeah. we're going to keep saying it. I feel that some of you have instantly gone a bit more into performance mode and, and are getting more involved in it since you've come into it at the end, so which is great to see. It's been a mad couple of weeks. We left London without a complete show. We finished our show in our first rehearsal week here. The final act came together quite quickly, which was good. I think everyone was all sort of guns blazing to get the show finished. We've been so lucky to be in the process of creating it. Um, there's a lot like learning how much actually goes into each section. Like you'd have one day and it'd just be based on like the smallest section ever, but there's so much detail put into it. What surprised me with like tech is you have to be so precise with where you put everything. Like the chair scene, you have to put it in a certain point where before like, well, I was just putting it in a certain area. Obviously we'd learned a lot of the show, you know, through different bits. And I just thought, okay, they'll just be like, right, do it. But they're so hands on, it's amazing. Like they're constantly like trying new ideas. So it's like, we're just on stage. We just hear these voices from somewhere. Three and four and five and six and one, two and three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, one. To be actually performing on the stage, doing a show is something which you don't get very often, so it's really special to have that, especially where you live, it's, it's not bad. Personally, I always get really nervous. I just need to calm myself and like, yeah, I'm feeling nervous now, so I'm sure I feel like it's right at the start, like when the whole thing started and you see like Romeo and Juliet on stage and we're just waiting for this bell to run in and like, that's the worst bit. You're just like waiting there like, oh. Hi 
bitch. <laughs> I'm so nervous now. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting jittery. You must be a bit of, bit of a rush. Is that a wig? Yeah, yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Every time I see it on the little thing, I always think that's Dee Dee's face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I know, can't see anybody else. Not, that's not all the wig, though, is it? Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought on the first day. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's all the wig. Yeah. Do you know when you pull it off at the side? Oh, does it that's hurt? So yeah, yeah. Because I've got baby hairs there as well, so oh, like, it's it it it. yeah. Oh, it's worse than red shoes because you have a quick chain, so they literally be like, no. <laughs> 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 So yeah, ready to uh, ready to get going and do. <laughs> <laughs> I've run out of words to say. Oh. Once the show was up and running, it was weird because it was such a high, like, pressure cooker environment, you know, it was it was really intense and then suddenly it all slowed down a bit. Yeah, well, once we, once we got on tour, um, because we had our two companies, the Montagues and the Capulets, we started in Leicester with the Capulets. Um, and once they'd done their first performance, the Montagues went to the next venue because even when the show started performing, we were still changing it and working on it all the time. What's amazing about New Adventures and about Matt is he's always thinking about things and always thinking how can we make this better so even just a few weeks into the tour things were changing constantly and we were adapting to that the second one is cued when you go down so if you want if you want them to spread a little bit longer you could you could stay up a little bit longer maybe Romeo's arm comes up to pull you 
you down. Then the next one will come in once you look down. Oh, did you hear that crack? Yeah. What was that? My back, baby! Oh, that felt so good. Paul Smethurst, we see you, we thank you, we love you, as well as Ariel, big, big heart, every single member of the company, we love you. <laughs> For Neil and Alan, the residents, they were also trying to hold on to all the information because we'd be trying different things all the time. Remember, you've got the bed here, so your torch will probably be round about here somewhere. Just, just because only because if you get into the habit of going, okay, I put my torch straight here, these two are going to have a squeezy nightmare. <laughs> It was really amazing for me for the first part of the tour going in to work with the young cast and seeing how incredible what they were doing was because it is amazing they le learn a show in a week which is just like ridiculous when you think about it and i think at the time i wish i'd enjoyed that a bit more because i think when you're in something you're just trying to get through and in retrospect it was so incredible just watching these artists just totally come into their own in that moment and just at the end of the week they're ready to do a show it's incredible the first time i saw a matthew Vaughan show was actually with school so it was a uh, i think my pe teacher took us to swan lake and i remember watching it thinking that oh wow these dancers are amazing and i really would love to be one of them so i guess to be here now is pretty cool <laughs> I feel really lucky, yeah. My first dance class was when I was four. Uh, that was back in Australia. Um, I dance every day except Friday and Sunday, and I do mainly ballet. Um, I do do contemporary and a bit of tap, and on Tuesdays I do a drop-in capoeira class. I came over here when I was 11, and I've been dancing at Fancy Footwork since then. And um, feet in first position, please. Can you just have, yeah, nice and easy. So invisible string up to the ceiling. Open it out. Now looking out and beyond. And here we go, guys. So when Tanisha came, she'd come straight from the airport, well, from Australia. And the first thing that she did was come to a dance class. And I think that is Tanisha. She is straight in, hits the ground running, and she's always danced with 100% tenacity, work ethic, and enjoyed everything. It takes her somewhere. She has embodied everything, whether it be the tap, the modern, the ballet, the contemporary, jazz, musical theatre, street. And she takes the audience with it. So Tanisha has always had that, but with incredible grace. And that is something that has not changed, but in every other sense, she's just grown and blossomed. And this is where she's at at the moment. She will continue with the right nutrients, with the right tendering, with the right people around her, she will grow and blossom. This opportunity is amazing. And I really hope that she'll be able to take it to the next level. Oh, you're getting all teary now. <laughs> um, Tanisha, um, I, there's just one little thing that I'd just like to share with you that um, I've actually uh, got your advanced exam results in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you pass really? with distinction. Oh, really? Oh. With distinction. Oh. And I'm so, so, so proud of you. Thank you, sorry, in the middle. I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs>
a little small, uh, but <laughs> sure we can all squeeze. <laughs> this is like, like my photo wall thing. I know it's a bit, a bit soft and all, but this is actually my um, audition number from the Bourne audition. This <laughs> is a little, no, it's a bit, a bit strange, but it was from when I worked at KFC. I needed to, <laughs> um, it was just to get, you know, money for, more dance lessons, more touring and, and Spain for that. Paid minimum wage to cook chicken, but it was all right. I loved it. Um, and I think like, just don't, didn't want to forget about it and stuff. I don't know how to describe it. It was just a massive journey for me and I'm, I'm glad I took it because now I, I wouldn't have dreamt of being anywhere else other than here. And I'm so glad that I took every step that I did to get here. I um, originally started dancing, I was six. I saw a, a demonstration, like a show, for, for ballroom and Latin, and I, I absolutely loved it, like fell in love, kind of. I don't know, it was like one of the first comps I did like particularly like really well at. And so my mum loved it, and she was like, oh, I'm having a sticker, <laughs> put it on the fridge. <laughs> and it was only like recently, when I was a teenager, like three, four years ago, that I moved into contemporary and started exploring that. When I go on tour, like most of the other dancers in the company, they tour, then they go home and they sleep. I tour and then I go and do my, my Latin and make sure that's all up to scratch still because there's uh, like comps all over the country. Like I've been down to London for some, there's some in Essex. There's one at the Royal Albert Hall, been down to, to Bournemouth. And I think the, the best one I've been was when I went to the World Championships in Paris, in Disneyland, so it was, it was lovely. Um, we stayed an extra day and went around the park and then competed the next day and it was lovely. I was at a school in Blockswich called Walsh Academy. That's where I did my um, normal school stuff. I took my GCSEs and stuff. And I did um, one year of A-level there. Going into the summer, just before when I like realised that I could do dance as a career. And, and I was like, well, why am I wasting my time doing something else when that's what I really want, so. But for me personally, I feel like my autism is an issue sometimes. It's like. I build up mental blocks and I feel uncomfortable and then I don't engage properly in the classes. I'm fortunate in the fact that it's, it's high functioning autism, which means you're a little more aware of things. And then second of all, I've spent lots of time working with some amazing people around me, with consultants, with my mum, with, with my choreographer. And it's recognising and it's accepting when you're doing something, you know, slightly different or accepting I need this extra help or I need to change my point of view here. And I think that's what's really important to me, having like supportive people around me that have always been like supportive but not too pushy and have, have let me decide when I want to take that next step and when I want to make it my life or when I want to make it my career. Like Paul and Ariel have been great. If they can see that any one of us was struggling with something, they're like, take a breather, take a step out, reset, refocus. And I, I've been really grateful for that because like my biggest fear going into it is that we'll be on it and someone will be watching and I'll be like, oh, well, that's the young cast and they're the professionals and I, I, I don't want that. I don't want to say I'm just an add-on. I want to be part of it. I want to be in it and I want them to see that that was like a brilliant collaboration and everything and, and that's my goal, what I'm trying to get out of it. People constantly worry that they, they're always making mistakes all the time and that's not good. It's okay to make mistakes and I think that's something that they definitely learned that they had to work hard, they'd made mistakes but that was okay, nothing bad was going to happen and that you can more or less, if you put your mind to it, you can more or less do anything. I think some of them thought they would just be in the background all the time and, not, and in the dark <laughs> and of course they're there very clearly, very visible the whole time. It's not a token involvement they have. It's part of the production and they need to be there. And that was very important to us, but also very scary for them. And, you know, bravo to them for really taking that on board and, and throwing themselves in the deep end for their, most of them, their professional debuts in a, in a piece. I think when you undertake a project like this, legacy is, is such a huge consideration something really difficult to get right 
and definitely needs to be at the, at the heart of the project. I think it's such an important thing that our industry needs to keep producing these opportunities because if you don't start it from a young age, then when you get into companies, you're not going to see the world reflected. You're going to see people that are able to do these opportunities because they have that privilege. It's just incredible to look back at how many sort of careers and lives one project has impacted. And I think we just need it everywhere, you know? Young people can do things. <laughs>